Happy New Year. <laughs> or, or better yet, Happy New School Year. Are you excited about school starting? I mean, it's a new school year and that means a lot of change. Have you made any new resolutions for the school year? Better yet, how are you doing on the resolutions maybe you made last January? You know, the statistics say that 48% of people will make a resolution for change, but only 8% of people will follow through with that. Now, I'm, I'm not official, I'm not like super smart, but 48 and 8, I, I mean, that kind of feels like that's not a really high success rate. You know, I was looking through some resolutions, wanted to share a few with you, and there's this list of 10. I'm just going to give you three, but here are three resolutions that we can all keep. Number three, gain weight. I mean, who needs skinny jeans anyway, right? Or, 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 or like our politicians would say, is go run up the credit cards and help the economy. <laughs> or, or lastly, focus on the faults of others. It will make you feel better. I mean, those are uh, resolutions for this new school year that we, can, we could all keep. You know, the, the good news is that this message isn't about making a resolution for change. And, and it's not even about inspiring you to change. This talk today, this message time, is about talking about what it takes to finish change. In 2018, as we turned 90 years old as a church, I began to ask the question, what will we look like when we turn 100 years of age in 2028? Back in 2018, I mentioned that we were stepping into a decade uh, uh, that we were going to be living through over the next 10, 12, 15 years of the most rapid change in all of history. It would be more change than we had seen in the rest of history combined. And so what have we seen? Well, since then, these last five years, we've seen a global pandemic and our lives were radically disrupted. Um, millions of people across the world lost their lives. Politically in this nation, we are more polarized now, it seems, than we have ever been. And it seems to be getting uglier every single day. The arrival of artificial intelligence is, is threatening so much of the way people will work and, and entire industries. And then they're really trying to push uh, uh, energy change upon us. Like so much change is being driven towards us. So externally, there are a lot of changes going on, some good and, and some not so good. As a congregation, we launched our City Rise Missouri City campus and, and we began to develop our digital strategy. We then, in, in these last few years, embarked on Deep and Wide, our, our generosity initiative to extend our roots to broaden our reach. And you've heard today of some of the impact of that. Now, let me just reiterate how thankful I am to you to walk this road with you and with me and our, and our team. I'm thankful that we get to walk this road together. There are a few notes of significance that I want to share with you uh, that I'm excited about. First, uh, in this road we've been on, we have invested heavily for the digital age in which we live by launching our new app. We're currently redoing our website and we've, we've been building a production team, writing and capturing transformative content. I'm so excited about this for our future, not only the, the road we've been on. Further, we've been doing this while renovating our education building at Crosspoint. As you've already given $19 million to the 30 million of the anticipated and pledged gifts uh, during the Deep and Wide Generosity Initiative. And so we are making so much progress. And again, let me just say thank you so much. Now, I want to take a moment to remind you of a few things and then talk about what it takes to finish. First, who are we? Who are we? You know, we're a multi-site congregation called to our city and our world by generously giving the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our, our heart is to lift the city. That's what we call ourselves City Rise across three different locations. We have a DNA of, of a commitment to reaching our local communities through the local church the simplicity and clarity of the gospel message and being a people on mission. That is who we are. That's who we've been since 1928. 
And when we turn 100 years of age in 2028, I pray that we will be known for, known for loving our God, loving our neighbor, and lifting our city and the world by generously giving the gospel of Jesus Christ. But, but listen, this is more than a, a, a recast of a vision. It's really more like a halftime speech saying we have to go finish what we began. So hear me say, this isn't about inspiring change, it's about completing change. Because so much around us is changing, but we too are pushing forward to expand the kingdom of God right here in the heart of Houston, Texas. Now as I approach this message, I ask myself, what are the components or ingredients to lead change to completion? I want to give you three things, three things that we are making sure we are building into our change strategy here at the church. But I think it's something for you as well in your own lives as you're seeking to lead change to completion. Three things. Number one is a strategy. Number two is a structure. And number three is being stretched to strength. So we need strategy, a structure, and to be stretched to strength. And I get these from Proverbs 23, verses 3 and 4. Now, strategy decide, or declares how we're going to get things done. Strategy involves critical thinking. When, when, you, uh, when you think of strategy, I want you to think of the word wisdom, that we need wisdom. Notice this in Proverbs 24, verse 3a. It says, by wisdom, a house is built. See, wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge, experience, understanding, and common sense. It, it, it's, it's ability to apply insight. Utilizing wisdom is a technical skill. Wisdom provides you with the ongoing strategy of how to live. The, the scripture declares that wisdom is supreme. Though it costs all you have, it says get wisdom. It, it says that it begins with the fear of the Lord. It says that it leads to life, brings prosperity, gives security, and is needed to govern. We need wisdom. By wisdom, a house is built. The second thing we need is structure. Structure. The structure establishes the priority of the strategy. So if my objective is to be healthy, my strategy will be to diet and exercise. That would lead to weight loss. My structure then involves a calendar, a workout plan, and the do's and don'ts of my diet. So when you think of structure, think about the word understanding. Proverbs 24, verse 3, once again, by wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. Do you see the structure there? By understanding it is established. Uh, to, to, uh, understanding is to grasp and help to establish something. It's to make it stand tall. It involves comprehension, skill, and insight. I want you to know here at our City Rise family, we have some great teams, some great, uh, uh, some great structure in place. We have a finance committee. We have a personnel committee. We have a missions committee. We have the executive council. We have our staff. We have a diligent body of leaders who are helping us navigate the, the waters of change, who are speaking into and asking questions about and, and making sure we are driving change and leading change really, really well. We have good structure. We have, a teams, we have teams that provide great understanding to help us stand tall. So we need strategy, we need structure, but we also need to finish, and this is the third piece, and this is why changes often fail to be implemented, because we can say we wanna do, and we can even begin to do, but, but, but how do we finish doing? The third thing I want you to see is we need to be stretched to strength. To be stretched to strength. I, I remember one December, uh, we took a little family vacation after all the Christmas services, and we went to Great Wolf Lodge. My kids were really young, and we're playing in the wave pool. My daughter Carson was probably four or five years of age, and, and, and I would, I, the waves were still, so it was just still water. I would throw her away. She would have fun. She'd be able to stand up, and then she would practice swimming towards me. Well, as I threw her, I would take a step or two back. And every time I'd throw her and she'd swim back to me, I'd take a step or two back. And the distance began to get further and further. And she realized, wait, Dad, hang on, you're 
you need to come closer. And I said, no, I want you to stretch yourself. I want you to push yourself. I want you to, to get better at this. And to do that, you've got to go beyond what you are comfortable with. And so the same is true in our own lives. The same is true corporately. If, if all we do is what we're comfortable with, we won't advance the kingdom of God. It isn't until we're willing to be uncomfortable that we grow. You see, we get to pick our mindset. The first mindset that we tend to is like what Carson was. It's a fixed mindset. This is, this is I'm doing all the growing I've, I've planned to do, and this is where it stops. That's a fixed mindset mindset. But you and I, in a world that's rapidly changing, have the opportunity to choose a growth mindset that, that says, I want to keep growing. I want to keep stretching. Proverbs 23, 3 and 4 says, by wisdom, a house is built and by understanding it is established and by knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. By knowledge, knowledge is special insight and discernment. When we gain more knowledge about a relationship, a subject matter, a discipline, it stretches us until it becomes our strength. I mean, ask any medical student right now who've just entered medical school or just wrapping up medical school. Medical school is a continuous drink of knowledge that continuously challenges students and stretches them until they master the material. And that's what we're doing as a church. As we march to our 100th birthday, we are stretching to strength. We're grouping together and seeking to grow together with a growth mindset. I wanna challenge you and encourage you, encourage you to be radically committed to your community group and the people there. Grow together, have a growth mindset. There are people that God longs to use you to reach. And I wanna challenge you to be present in your community groups. We're giving financially and God is blessing your gifts. Let's keep stretching and let's keep reaching. And we're going with the good news all over the world and all over our city. This is what we are called to. And so let us continue because I'm so proud of our congregational efforts to advance the gospel. See, friends, we've got to remain diligent and faithful. I want to forecast a few things to you as we continue toward, toward our 100th birthday. Again, this is more a halftime speech than it is a, here's the new hill to take. Let's just keep staying down the same path. And, and let me talk to you about what it looks like a year from now, Lord willing. In the next year, I hope that we have finished the renovation repair at City Rise, Missouri City. We have a, an insurance claim out right now, and we're trying to get that wrapped up. And I, I pray that a year from now, that is complete. It's a pretty big insurance claim. Uh, a year from now, I hope that we are finished with our renovations at our Cross Point campus. We are on pace to be completed. And my prayer is that about a year from now for the 24-25 new school year that we will be opening a second location for a children's village preschool. ACV, a children's village preschool. Our hope is that we're opening that second location in September of 24. We will have finished a year from now our two-year deep and wide commitment. And I hope and pray we have received more than $30 million of the pledged and anticipated gifts. I pray that a year from now, we're continuing to see growth at all of our campuses and all of our locations. And I pray that we will be reaching digitally as well. We're seeing more and more people engage with our message and come into our ecosystem of reach and influence. And then my prayer is that we will continue to grow our influence with our partners throughout our city and around the world. And then when we, got, we get to our 100th birthday in February of 2028, I pray that more life and ministry is happening here in our church than has ever happened before. That there is growth, uh, uh, significant growth in our Interloop campuses that, that, that we would look at, at each other and say, man, we've almost doubled our reach uh, of, of what's happening inside these walls. And that same would hold true at our City Rise Missouri City campus that it's it's nearly doubled and that we'll be finished with the renovations that God has put before us that we need to do at our campuses and that digital continues to make a deep impact. I pray that we're planting churches and, and lives are being lifted here in the City Rise uh, family across the city of Houston but also around the world 
and that we'll look back on the previous 10 years and say, you know, look at all that God did. Lives were changed, marriages were restored, thousands were saved, and God was really using us as he stretched us. May our homes personally and corporately be filled with precious and pleasant riches because we continued to walk with our good shepherd. God bless you. Thank you for watching this today.